The last five vertebrae are referred to as the lumbar vertebrae. And these are very large vertebrae. They have a very massive body or centrum. We also see, of course, all the other features that we've seen on the vertebrae, including a nice spinous process, which tends to be blunt, some very good superior articulating surfaces or articular surfaces, inferior articular surfaces here, the pedicle where the irregular portion of this bone connects with the body, and as we see, again, the vertebral foramen. Um, notice too that the lamina are quite pronounced, and so these are the lam, whoops, there we go, these are the lamina right here. Those are the lamina, again, joined to form the spinous process. Now this vertebrae also looks like an animal. Of course, the most more majority of them look like a moose. And so can everybody see the moose? That's the lumbar vertebrae. This is the sacrum. The term sacrum means sacred, and that's because this was the bone of sacrifice in Roman and Greek mythologies, or maybe I should say religions. Notice that there's a sacral crest, which of course is medial, and so we call this the medial sacral crest. On either side, there's one that's less pronounced called the lateral sacral crest. Another thing that strikes me interesting about this posterior view of the sacrum is the presence of these foramen, and these are referred to as the sacral foramen, and specifically the posterior sacral foramen. Nothing really goes through the posterior sacral foramen. We have also a superior articular surface, and if we spin it around, we see something called the ala. So these wing-like structures are the ala. The term ala means wing. You can also see a really nice broad body of the sacrum, which is going to be articulating, of course, with the last lumbar vertebrae. Now, here are what we refer to as transverse lines. This is where we see that the sacrum is actually a series of fused vertebrae. And of course, there are no inner vertebral discs here. We also see these anterior sacral foramen, and it is through here that we have the majority of the remainder of the nerve roots coming from the cauda equina. Here is the articular surface, which we can call an auricular surface because it looks a little bit like an ear. And of course, this is where the sacrum is going to be articulating with the ilium. We can spin it around this way and see the sacral promontory. And so this little bump right where the body essentially is coming up is referred to as the sacral promontory. There is also a sacral canal and it's through the sacral canal that the cauda equina travels. And of course, it's going to end up here at the sacral hiatus. So the remaining few nerve roots traveling through the sacral hiatus are going to become the coxygeal nerves. These little bumps are referred to as the sacral cornu, and it is here that the sacrum will articulate with the final little bone, which we call the coccyx bone. Let's take a look at that coccyx real fast. Here's the coccyx bone. Let's zoom in on it. This is a series of fused vertebrae. And there are anywhere from th three to five vertebrae that are associated with this bone. The term coccyx means cuckoo because it resembles a cuckoo sitting in a tree. Uh, when a cuckoo sits in a tree, you can see its tail and its wings, but you cannot, and you can see the shoulder points, but you cannot see its head hence the name coccyx. Finally, we see the little promontories here, little prongs, and these are the cornu of the coccyx bone, which of course articulate with the cornu of the sacrum. In this anterior view of the sacrum, we can appreciate two specific joints. This is the lumbosacral joint, which allows four-legged animals to move in a very explosive manner and also allows animals like dolphins and otters to swim. This is the sacroiliac joint. This is the joint between the sacrum and the ilium. And that's very well illustrated here.